welcome we'll start with yet another important topic in geography that's the climate of india now starting with the difference between the climate and the weather weather is something which is determined on a day to day basis however climate is a kind of year long average so i can say uh, average conditions for 30 years or more would help you determine the climate of a place based on that i can say uh, the region of thar desert is a kind of arid climate because over the years uh, the average and the phenomena has uh, elaborated the concept or explained the thing that the climate is a kind of arid climate with less rainfall and high temperatures so you have climate which is a sum total of weather for 30 years or more however weather is at a given point of time now whenever we talk about weather or climate whatever it is there are few parameters that we must and must refer the first is the temperature of the region the amount of rainfall the pressure conditions the wind flow and the humidity so these five are the primary things that you must look for to understand the climatic condition of a region now in india the most common climatic condition is attributed to the monsoons of india now this word monsoon was derived from the arab word mausim and this word was given by the arab traders and the navigators when they landed into india and they felt there is some different phenomena than other countries that happen here and this word mausim meant seasonal reversal in the wind direction so you have winds that flow into different direction during the summers and the winter months india is predominantly a monsoon land being a monsoon land the rainfall is very pulsating and very variable and it ranges from 100 to 120 days now if we talk about the climatic conditions there are extremes of climate that could be seen with rajasthan at a high of 50 degrees celsius in contrast to jammu kashmir where you can reach as low as minus 45 degrees celsius then again you have extremes in rainfall that can be seen in the region so you have rainfall in meghalaya at 400 centimeters in contrast to ladakh which is a cold desert with merely 10 centimeters now tamil nadu is known for the winter rainfalls uh, we'll discuss this again as we move forward to understand broadly on the map of india i can say rainfall decreases as one moves from east to west so the westernmost region which is the region of Rajasthan is a desert region and the easternmost region is uh, not the easternmost uh, most of uh, in one of the extremes of northeast you have Meghalaya and this Meghalaya is one of the places which has the highest rainfall again the coastal regions have less extreme temperatures as compared to the mainland so the coastal areas have kind of more moderate uh, mo more moderate temperature because the pressure differences are not that extreme uh, in the minute we'll understand how this works now there are various controls of climate first we say latitude so from equator to poles the temperature decreases so equator being the hottest and poles getting cooler so you have temperature drop that is visible as you move on the latitude Again, if I move up on an altitude or a mountain, I will find a drop in temperature. At higher areas, the air is less denser as compared to lower areas. Then the pressure and the wind. Pressure and wind depends on the latitude and the altitude and they influence, uh, they influence the temperature and the rainfall of the region. Again, the distance from the sea, the higher continent, uh, continentality is seen there is more extremes of pressure differences that are variable so, uh, i can say this is a kind of extreme high pressure zone as compared to a low pressure zone that occurs in australia and the winds will move, will move from high pressure then you have uh, the ocean currents which are again classified as warm current and cold current then based on this you have the thermoaline circulations in the ocean water that could be seen mount uh, relief features act as barriers so in india the importance of Himalayas cannot be neglected because these Himalayas block the cold waves which can come from the region of Central Asia and the Mongol area. So you have the cold winds that are blocked and again the monsoon winds that come here 
get collided with the himalayas and you have kind of abundant rainfall in the region so again this mountain acts as a barrier preventing the cold winds and leading to rainfall in the region now why are deserts predominantly located on the western margins in the subtropical region so what happens in the subtropical regions the prevailing wind direction of the tropical winds are easterly as a result uh, the winds that originate from the east so you have kind of as they reach the westernmost edge they get dry so you have winds that originate from east so you have the easterly winds that come in and as they reach towards the west they get dry since they get dry the western regions on the subtropical uh, belt have desert type of climate that is mostly seen now as we talked about latitude altitude and latitude now let's come on to india the specific, specific case we have already talked about the factors in general that affect the climate now coming on to india you have the role of himalayas that we already discussed and when we talk about the latitudinal extension you have the tropic of cancer which divides india into the tropical and the subtropical region so you have the tropical region and the subtropical region and then the important thing that you must understand in climatology or climate uh, as such is the direction and the phenomena of wind movement so we have covered this in detail when we have talked about the coriolis force and the pressure gradient force the pgf now just a brief idea about that here now because of the coriolis force what would happen is you would have the deflection towards the right in the north hemisphere and towards the left in the south hemisphere so you would have winds that would deflect towards right in the north hemisphere and left in the south hemisphere now what would happen in the summers the summers would have a low pressure in the central of india as a result the winds from high pressure will move towards low pressure once they reach the regions of low pressure they would uh reach the saturation and finally they will drop down as rainfall however in case of southwest that happens in case of southwest monsoon however in case of northeast monsoon you have high pressure over the mainland in asia in compared to low pressure in australia and winds blow from high pressure to uh, low pressure so from india you have the northwest monsoon that blows and you have the northeast monsoon that blows here and both of these causes winds to retreat and hence they are the cause for the retreating monsoon or the winter rainfall in the coast of tamil nadu that we saw now besides these uh, the winds waves and uh, the controls that we have talked about there are some other important controls the first is the upper air circulation this upper air circulation is comprised of two winds the tropical easterly jet stream and the westerly flow now westerly flows at 27 to 30 degrees north and it is also known as the subtropical westerly in india it runs south of himalayas except for the summer season and it is the main cause for the western disturbances in the region now in the summer the same westerly wind the westerly jet stream moves north of himalayas then you have the easterly jet stream which is visible over the peninsula at nearly 14 degrees north in the summers besides these you have the cyclonic disturbances that occur in winter so you have kind of low pressure zones that would be created and there would be cyclonic depressions you would have tropical cyclones that would occur in the month of monsoon and uh, because of the easterly flow you would have those in the month of october and november as well so all these are other phenomena or upper air phenomena that would affect the uh, kind of uh, climatic condition in a specific area now let's talk about monsoons in india monsoons is a phenomena that usually runs 20 degrees north and south you have mainly the equatorial uh, the, sorry the tropical region that is affected by the monsoon winds in some areas as we saw you have the subtropical region the western sides of the continent where you have the desert kind of climate however monsoon is predominantly a tropical phenomena with differential heating of the land and sea so if both the bodies of land and water are at the same temperature there would be i would say uh, 
no there, there is no differential heating they are at the same temperature there would be no obvious movement of the wind that would affect certain phenomena of rainfall however when there is a difference in the temperature it would create differences in the pressure conditions once you have the pressure conditions that are different there would be wind movement and this wind movement would determine if the winds are blowing from the sea they would bring in moisture and when they collide with mountains or uh, there is a natural obstruction that comes into way they would drop down once they reach the saturation point and this would lead into rainfall so this is the basic process to understand how rainfall occurs now because of the uh, southwest monsoons that comes in is mainly because you have india here and you have africa here and this africa has a continent of uh, uh, the country of madagascar at madagascar you have the high pressure zones that form which is 20 degrees south and then again you have the heating of the tibetan plateau that occurs north of indian mainland and because of this there is a kind of generation of wind phenomena from high pressure to low pressure leading into the rainfall into the um, Indian mainland. Now movement of the westerly jet stream in the Himalayas and easterly jet streams in the peninsula are also one of the causes for monsoon to occur. Now to understand monsoon again there is uh, another phenomena which affects the monsoon to some extent which are known as southern oscillations and the El Nino effect or the La Nina effect. Now when we talk about southern oscillations I can say in the normal circumstances what happen you have Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean. Pacific o uh, Ocean remains at high pressure in comparison to Indian Ocean. However, there are phases of reversal every two to uh, few years and what happens is you have a kind of high pressure that builds up in the Indian Ocean as compared to the Pacific Ocean and this leads to southern oscillations. So southern oscillation is the differences of the pressure conditions which could be seen in Tahati in uh, Pacific and compare in comparison to Darwin in Australia in Indian Ocean and this would determine the intensity of the monsoon. Again if I say there is ne negative southern oscillation in, uh, index that means there would be late monsoons or below average rainfall. Now what is El Nino? El Nino is a Spanish term which means child or baby Christ, Christ. and this was the name given because uh, El Nino starts to flow during the months of during the time there is Christmas coming up. So what happens is instead of the routine cold current of the Peru, the current becomes warm current every two to three, uh, two to five years. And because of this, there are changes in the pressure conditions that are seen, which lead to the El Nino Southern Oscillations. Southern Oscillations we have already talked about and those Southern Oscillations are amplified by the impact of El Nino. This would lead to increase in the sea surface temperature and weakening of the trade winds. Again, this El Nino would lead to extremes of temperature. So there would be kind of extreme poor monsoons in the region of India in comparison to America where you would have ample of rainfall. So you would have a kind of extreme differences between the Pacific and the Indian Ocean that would be visible because of El Nino and you have La Nina which is a kind of reverse phenomena of El Nino that is seen. Now what is the monsoon mechanism that works? So let's say this is a kind of pulsating behavior that occurs and it occurs every 100 to 120 days from the months of June to September. Initially there is a burst of monsoon. So you have the island regions here. The monsoon first appears onto the island in the month of April to May but it touches the mainland by the 1st of June. By the 1st of June, it touches the southernmost tip of India. As it moves, it bifurcates into two branches. One branch go towards the Ganga and merge by June end. The other is the one which goes towards Bay of Bengal and brings rainfall to the region of Northeast and finally comes up and joins the main stream here again in the Ganga Plains. So this branch and this branch they again kind of join in the northern plains causing kind of ample rainfall in the 
northern plains or the ganga plains of india however in the month of september there is a gradual retreat that starts from the north west of india so you have september retreat and it retreats from the uh, easternmost india by the months of october and november and this retreating monsoon brings about winter rainfalls in tamil nadu which are good for certain crops here and you call it cherry blossoms there now <clears throat> there are four seasons which we demarcate based on the indian climate the first is the cold weather you have winter months from november to february uh, it's snow and frost in the north and northeast you have dry winds you have winter rainfalls in tamil nadu this winter rainfall if it is in a small quantity is good and it is known as mahavat uh, it is good for the rabi crops in the region hot weather is mainly from march to may is the main uh, region of the north where you have the hot belt you have a local wind which is known as loo in india that flows which is dry and gusty and it leads to localized storms like kal baisakhi in west bengal between the hot weather season and the monsoon season you have a kind of pre monsoon showers and these pre monsoon showers are good for ripening of mangoes specifically in kerala and karnataka they are known as mango showers then you have the advancing monsoons which is the southwest monsoons you have the windward side the side towards the west which receives most of the rainfall and then you have the leeward side which receives less rainfall on the western ghats this advancing monsoon is maximum in the northeast of india so you have maximum impact in the northeast india there are definitely breaks so you have wet spell dry spell wet spell dry spell there is not a kind of continuous uh, 100 days or 200 days of rainfall then you have mysoram uh, which is the place with highest rainfall this region is also known for stalagmites and stalagmites caves then finally you have the retreating monsoon which causes winter rainfall in tamil nadu you have the temperature that starts to rise with clear skies in the month of october the region also known as october heat because you have high temperature and humidity in the day and this leads to cyclonic depression in the region of andaman sea and finally from the andaman it retreats by the month of december and january so from the mainland we say retreat uh, retreat of monsoon is by the month of october and november but if we incorporate the region of islands it's the month of december and january now this map shows the onset of monsoon and this map shows the withdrawal of monsoon so as you can see you have the onset of monsoon that starts with first june in the southernmost india so you have the first june which is this then you have the 5th june and finally 15 july you touch the northwest of the uh, region now this region you have the retreat which starts from 1st september so as you can see you have minimum period of rainfall towards the westernmost region and as a result it is one of the driest region uh, then you have the retreat that's 15 september and finally 1 december by Uh, november and you have one december by the southernmost region and finally as i said you have uh, the islands you retreat they uh, you have retreat by the end of december now definitely monsoons act as a unifying uh, thing they have a kind of unifying bond because they bring in lot of agriculture waters to the river since there are ample waters there would be less conflicts less ethnic and uh, kind of less conflicts between various tribal groups and the various uh, regions you would have a kind of uh, rhythmic cycle of seasons that would occur there would be less extremes in the temperature variations that would be seen if there is good rainfall and uh, ample monsoons that occur and finally you have Himalayas, which protect from the north wind, north wind, and they kind of exert the main. Uh, they are the main cause for the uh, phenomena of monsoon in India. However, peninsula do exert some influence, but that is a kind of moderate influence on the um, climatic conditions of India in general. So, with this, we cover the fourth chapter. We will be covering two more remaining chapters for class nine uh, in the upcoming lectures. Have a good day.